the last time on Pete and his bus. As you might have gathered by now, I don't actually like modern cars very much. But every now and then one comes along that is just a little bit special. This time on Pete and his bus, we're going to have a look at what I've been up to for the last two months. Welcome to another episode of Pete and his bus. Now I'd like to apologize for being off the air for such a long time, but that is simply because a lot of stuff has been happening and I'm gonna give you a quick recap now to demonstrate exactly what all this was. For those of you that follow me on Facebook, you will know that I've spent the last seven weeks selling drinks to the punters at the Scream Space near Hatfield. And Hatfield has a place called Hatfield House. And Vortex Events have put a giant TV in their grounds. And they're going to be using it as an outdoor cinema and event space. Myself and four other traders have been tasked with serving all the public food and drink. These are the different traders on site. So the question is, was the screen space a success? Well, that entirely depends who you ask. But if you were to ask me personally, I would say yes. It was a huge success. And I'm not talking from a financial point of view or for business reasons. I'm just talking about the fact that it's 2020, there's a global pandemic, and I was able to go out and actually earn a living. But the best bit about this entire event was all the amazing people that were involved in creating it. And actually, we just had a really good time. So check out the video and photos of how it all went down.
For those of you that watched the last episode of Pete and His Bus, there was one thing which I wasn't allowed to talk about yet. Well, the good news is I can reveal it partially. I've essentially bought myself a new toy. And here it is. Looking at a 1956 Bedford RLHZ self-propelled pump, also known as a Green Goddess. And I happen to think this is the coolest thing ever. So you might be wondering why on earth I've bought a fire engine. Well, that's the bit I can't talk about, but it's pretty cool though, right? Not only did I buy a fire engine, I actually bought a half decent one and it has got all the bits still with it. does it come with every hose, shovel, bucket and fuel can, it also comes with a really extensive service history. Now I did say half decent, because getting this fire engine into this barn was not as straightforward as you might think. So how do you go about buying a fire engine? Well, this particular one happened to be on eBay. And with these particular vehicles, the structure of the vehicle is actually more important than all the mechanical bits because the structure is made of wood. It's effectively a big shed on wheels. Now the mechanicals are tough, but the structure is not. So I had a really, really good look at the body and a lot of it had been recommissioned and the entire outer shell repainted. So I was very pleased with what I found. The problem is, I might not have spent enough time checking the mechanicals. When I first set off, the vehicle was a bit reluctant to sort of move and it just felt underpowered. Now don't get me wrong, these things are not fast and they never will. They're heavy and they're old fashioned, but it just didn't feel very positive. After a bit of backwards and forwards, it started to go. So I thought, as per usual, when I buy one of these things, I just hit the road and I wait and see what happens. And 99% of the time, I end up at the location where I'm supposed to. So the fire engine seemed fine whilst I was driving in the sort of built up area and all the vehicles around me were roughly going the same speed but it really showed how slow it was the second I hit the motorway. At this point, I was doing 35, 37 miles an hour with all the traffic flying by 
And every time I would go slightly uphill, I could really feel the engine struggling. I thought, there is something not right here. It is simply down on power. Now, the next thing that happened is probably the only lucky and good thing that happened on this entire day. Because the second I heard a few pops and bangs and I lost all power, I was next to a lay-by. When you're in the situation, which I have been before, because these situations happen when you work with old vehicles, the first thing you think is, how much is this going to cost me? <laughs> oh dear. And everything was going so well. This is where the water was. I don't know if you can see that. Plenty of oil though, which is a little bit worrying. But a few seconds later, I thought, you know what? Let's just not think about this and let's just organize recovery. But this was a lot trickier than I thought it would be. With the current global crisis, a lot of people are not at work. And this sadly includes recovery drivers. So it took me nearly eight and a half hours to find someone that could actually pick up a vehicle of this size and take me home. Our savior on this very day was Lloyd. He was professional, cool, calm, collected, and ready for the journey ahead. So there you have it, one of the longest and most boring days in the life of Pete without his bus. Um, I'd like to thank Lloyd for his help in recovery. I'd also like to specially thank Briny, who was the person who drove me to pick the fire engine up and she stayed with me the entire journey and then drove me all the way back to the screen space. We arrived at quarter to four in the morning ready to serve drinks the next day. So it really was a long one. Uh, the only disappointing thing, apart from the fact that the fire engine broke, is the fact that the bloke who I bought it off did nothing to help me. His name shall not be mentioned, but I wasn't very impressed. Anyway, another adventure in the life of Pete and his bus. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope that the next episode can bring something positive and something that works that would be great. See you next time.